Hello folks, just another noisy day here in Taipei. Uh, for today's video, what I'd like to do is make another bottle opener. And I've done this in the past, but uh, the reason I want to do it now is because someone had asked me uh, to uh, help them with some issues they were having making a bottle opener out of uh, railroad spikes. So, uh, and they actually showed me a picture and I'll put that picture in so you can see, you know, what, what I'm seeing. Based on that picture, uh, I think that there are a few problems with that. And now I, I do have a railroad spike, <clears throat> but I only have one because they're not, you know, they don't have these in Taiwan and it's not ubiquitous like in the States or maybe in Canada. So I don't want to alter this because I use this for other things, for sizing tongs. So I just, I have a small, small piece of half inch square that I'll use and uh, demonstrate that without using the spike. So, but basically, when we look at that picture, and the way that uh, the way he shaped the spike in a curve, it won't put pressure. The way I see it, it won't put pressure on the top of the cap. You know, so when when you when you want to open a bottle cap, you're either you know pulling or lifting, and then there has to be some downward pressure on the top of the cap. So the way his curve is so great, I don't think that that's being achieved. And then another issue is is that the spike end, it doesn't seem to me like he's altered this here. So it's a little bit thick, and I think that thicker, this here has to be thinned out some to just grab the lip of a cap. And then <clears throat> the final thing is that I think th this should be worked back that way. So, you know, you can see in my picture here, you know, I think that, you know, whatever you're using, just regular square stock or if you're using spikes, you have to create, you know, this has to go back and create and be thin in this section and the distance between here where there's pressure and then where it's grabbing under the bottle cap should be about a quarter of an inch which is about the height of a bottle cap so if you achieve those things if you just achieve that that you'll it'll be a, a, a very useful bottle opener it's not hard but you know I think that like I said sometimes you know people maybe just uh, uh, you know maybe thinking maybe thinking too much sometimes the solution is just very simple so, and I just want to make another bottle open. I give so many of these away, so I just like, like to make another. So, I'll just very quickly demonstrate doing this in another way. I've done it in the past, but in, in a different, uh, with a different technique. And then, you know, and then I'll probably do something. I'd like to make kind of a different twist. So, I don't know. I have something in my mind and just want to try it out. So, like I said, in, this, in these videos, I often like to experiment. So, yeah, anyway, uh, let me get to it and we'll see how this turns out. Uh, before I begin, I want to give a big donation shout out to uh, Bruce Butcher, to Mr. Ubiquitous, and also uh, thank him for the inspiration for this video, and also an another donation shout out, big uh, shout out to Robert Custer. Thanks a lot, fellas. Some of the suggestions I made about the railroad spike bottle opener in the picture may be moot. I thought he planned to use it freehand, but subsequently I found out that he'll use it in a mounted position. So this changes some things, but some of my suggestions still do apply. Obviously, this is not, you know, this is not a railroad spike. You know, uh, most spikes are five-eighths of an inch square, and 
and I didn't have a piece of that. I wish I did, and I would have used that for this project. But you know, you can get the idea is that okay, the spike's head is offset to one side, just like this piece. So you know, if you were wanting to use a spike to make a bottle opener, I think you have to go beyond just that L. Now you have to you know make this end come back this way. So and then, like I said, keep the space here about a quarter of an inch. You know, so that's what we'll do next. You know, so if I was using a spike, you know, I might work it flat first, maybe, or maybe thin it out like this, how I was just working this piece, you know, hit it down some here and then in this way. And then, you know, I'll just show you the next step, how to bend that back. And then make sure you maintain this here, don't curve it too quickly here, so that it'll make contact with the top of the bottom. Simple enough. here is just about a quarter of an inch. So I know if that fits in like such, you know, that would work really well for a bottle opener then. Yeah, so it's just that simple. You know, and then this end here is thin enough and we can thin it down even a little bit more. Like I said, you don't want to leave it too thick. So what I'll do is I'll probably insert this again and then work that just a little bit thinner right in that one spot right there just so it can, it can catch right below the cap. And then here, like I said, it's just about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. do it for just, you know, for the function of being a bottle opener. I know from experience, you know, that if that fits, no, it's a little tight. I'll loosen it up just a hair. There we go. If that fits just at the edge like such, then that, that'll be, uh, work well as a, as a bottle opener. The top here will make contact with the top of the bottle cap, and this thinner lip will grab the bottom without grabbing below and grabbing maybe a glass or something like that. So, yeah. So let's, uh, yeah, from now on, on this piece, you know, from here on out, I'll just, uh, let me freestyle it. I think I'm gonna punch a hole, and then I wanna try, like I said, a different kind of a twist. So, get that going. wanted to make these depressions on each side just a little bit deeper.
I'm going on this. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, my plan was to try to put those, use this, uh, this uh, dapping tool and just put those holes in, uh, depressions in, and then just twist it and see what happens. So let me give it a twist and see what happens. It's a nice view of my uh, extremely hairy arm. Looked like the missing link. The missing link started the blacksmith. Hmm. Yeah, it kind of looks a little bit interesting here, but a little wacky there. But I'm gonna hammer that and then see what that looks like then. I like uh, Bruce's idea where it's you know the, it, where it's curved. So you know, I was thinking maybe I'll just put a little curve on this side, but that, that does look pretty nice too. Yeah. yeah, maybe I'll curve it just a little like such. Not the most graceful curve, but I think it looks, it's more organic looking with that. So there it is. Let me clean her up and I'll show you the, uh, the end product. I might just hit it with a file really quick on the edges here. I also hit it with a brass brush. So there it is. I really like the way this turned out. I like, you know, having it a little bit curved like that because it just makes it want to naturally drop down, you know, when you're opening a cap. And I think, you know, forming this end is simple enough and it, it will also give you some direction if you're using spikes. And in the future, when I get, you know, head, head back to the States, I'll bring a bunch back and then I can use those for projects. But yeah, I like it a lot. Again, thanks again uh, to Bruce for the uh, inspiration and the donation, and that rhymes. And Robert Custer, thanks again, much, much appreciated. So. I think you know what time it is, fellas. Castile Donker time. So let's see. You can see how it puts pressure on the top and just grabs underneath the lip. Perfect. You know, and actually this kind of bottle opener is good if you want to save the caps, if you don't want to pry it and dent it in. You know, it keeps pressure throughout on the top. So, yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this. Time for a sip. I'll catch you next time.